what's going on everyone we are back today we got to talk about some new cards and my oh my i i keep saying and i even made a video about this yesterday i talk about boba fett and how he seems to just get all the tools i think it's partly because well we always are thinking about boba fett but today i i truly do think that uh boba fett might be a little bit biased maybe because they're setting up for the underworld set and he was the only real underworld strong leader that we had in the set one or something, or maybe just he's so overpoweredly statted that uh, we're just gonna keep coming back to it. But we gotta talk about a few cards, and a few of them today are just nuts, okay? Like, absolutely nuts for Boba Fett. So stay tuned, guys. But we gotta talk about Chewbacca first up. He's an eight costed Vigilance Heroism ground unit, 410 with grit. And he has, when played, you may defeat a unit with five or less remaining HP. And he also has a reverse costed, or I guess, uh, separately costed smuggle with a separate aspect that's nine aggression heroism so a pretty interesting card we've only seen one other as far as i remember someone can correct me in the comment section down below as you all very much do so um the only other one was the hot shot dl44 blaster which is the um aggression front side but cunning on the back side upgrade that you could play from your smuggle pile and this is well similar in that way where it's vigilance front side and aggression on the smuggle pile now Let's just talk about the stat line. A 410 with grit uh, for eight resources is actually pretty powerful. Um, it's a reasonable amount of stats, and it will end up potentially either killing something already because of the four power or just, you know, hitting a couple times. And even if you're hitting something like eight power or nine power, you get to survive. And 10 toughness is a lot to get through. I mean, if you look at it, it's like Emperor Palpatine, right? That is a unit that basically never dies. And with grit, this becomes an absolute nightmare to actually get through. Because if this hits one of your units, it could become like an eight, six, right? Or like a nine, five, like that becomes a really powerful threat that's gonna end the game very quickly. You also get the Count Dooku ability. This is the comparison that I make, right? Um, if we look at the defeating an enemy unit with five or less remaining HP, Count Dooku is a little bit worse, but he also comes down a little bit earlier. He also has a completely separate stat line as a 5-4 shielded versus a 4-10 grit. If I were to just directly compare Count Dooku to Chewbacca here, um, I would say Chewbacca is far better. The extra point of toughness on the defeat is really important. The fact that he's actually a really powerful statted unit, not just a 5-4 shielded, is also extremely relevant. And on top of all that, you could potentially smuggle this guy out. This seems like a really, really powerful unit if you have the right shell for it. And hopefully we have some Wookiee decks and Chewbacca is going to be fantastic there, of course. Wookiees look to be yellow blue so maybe you don't smuggle this guy out you just play him as an eight costed unit but honestly the stat line and the effect is probably worthwhile playing at eight resources and to be honest this is a card that well makes me kind of consider trying to build a controlling heroism deck one of the big things that you know the heroism decks didn't have before was like these top and powerhouse threats like avenger coming down that can end the game but also enough support like Emperor Pal <coughs> Palpatine's and Count Dooku's or Super Laser Blast to try to get to that point. So Chewbacca is a little bit more interesting and I'm curious to see where he's going to end up, but I do think he's actually quite powerful. Next up, we have a really interesting event in a two-costed Let the Wookiee Win Cunning Heroism card. An opponent chooses one, you ready up to six resources or you ready a friendly unit. If it's a Wookiee unit, attack with it. It gets plus two, plus oh for this attack. So First things first, this card already big downside is the fact that your opponent gets to choose. Any card that makes your opponent choose or gives your opponent the option of a certain effect means that this is a very much specific use case card, right? You need to have used some resources for this card to not be completely worthless. If you start the turn and you say, let the Wookiee win after you've attacked, which normally you attack first anyways, um, guess what? You get nothing. They just allow you to ready up to six resources and it does absolutely nothing. So. In order for this card to even be anything, you need to have, well, resources exhausted and you need to have a unit exhausted that you could potentially ready. Let's say your opponent goes into their turn, they're playing a control deck and they kill your unit, okay? And you have no units on the battlefield, but you use up all your resources, right? Well, you could play a unit and then play this and then ready that unit you just played so that is a possibility but you need to have a unit to play and not just use up your resources and have no unit like let's say you play a for a cause which uses up your resources but you have no units out well this doesn't do anything because they could just choose to allow you to ready a unit right well 
that's going to be completely worthless because you have no units in the battlefield. But the idea behind this card is your opponent taps out or they exhaust all the resources and they use whatever they're going to do. And then you have, well, played a couple of units or used up some resources like on a turn five, turn six type deal. And your opponent's a little bit afraid to ready up a bunch of resources because you could, you know, let's say, I mean, not quite Fetz Fire Spirit, but you could play like uh, Kanans, other Kanans. You can play other Wookiees. If you're in the, the blue, yellow colors, you could play um, all manner of different cards several two drops or, or a couple two drops three two drops if you're on six resources but the nice part about this is they're usually not going to want to do that but if you're in a wookie deck you get to immediately attack with a plus two plus a wookie which is really powerful as well i think this card can really do some work i think that if you're only readying up a friendly unit without it being a wookie it's not worth it because it's so situational that you're probably not going to end up getting a lot of damage in usually because of the situational use of this card right a lot of the times you're going to find that your opponent will just choose the one that really doesn't matter like you have one card in hand you let them ready up six resources and there's a very low chance that it's going to be a super impactful card and you get to preserve your life total if you're playing a control deck or if you're playing an aggro deck you're going to be like yeah sure uh attack with a unit you know who cares you know maybe they trade with a unit or kill one of your units but you are already getting your damage in or whatever there's a lot of different scenarios in which this is bad and so you really need to get maximum value and I think that means that you kind of want Wookiee units now you don't need a Wookiee deck there are a lot of Wookiee units that are just one ofs like the three three for two resources that we see we have you know things like Chewbacca which could be played we have things like um the grit uh wookie that's like a two four for three i believe it was there's a lot of different options that might just be good enough to play in your deck and if you're getting the plus two plus oh it's actually not too bad but that's not all we have another event here in detention block rescue this one's a three cost event in aggression you deal three damage to a unit if that unit is guarding any captured units deal six damage instead so it's a little bit of a worse open fire on a base level right most scenarios open fire is going to be better because it just deals four damage instead of three but this also allows you to basically kill any sort of guarded uh, or rather any unit that's guarding captured units so if we see things like um well i completely dropped the name on it now but uh things like the five costed three four that captures a unit when it comes down um maybe this is worthwhile there or any sort of event that captures a unit or things like finalizer right the things that just capture a bunch of units if those cards are prominent and good enough then detention block rescue could be a card that's worth main decking there's also another scenario which is if you're playing a red base control deck or like a blue red deck um, like a vader blue or Iden red detention block rescue might just be good enough to play in those decks as a three damage event because we're always looking for more removal and something like make an opening is a really good sideboard card and in the spots that it's really good in is amazing in there's a lot of times where you really need that third point of damage right if you look at like um battlefield marines sabine wrens red threes a wings none of those die to make an opening and those are some of the most common cards played on turn one and so detention block rest you might just be enough of an upgrade to play main deck over some of those cards but again if we're seeing a lot of capture cards then perhaps detention block rest becomes the go-to better than open fire um, at the current moment we also have heroic resolve here this is a really really cool upgrade it's a one cost that aggression heroism um, with plus one plus one and it gives attached unit gains action two resources defeat heroic resolve on this unit attack with this unit it gets plus four plus oh and gains overwhelm for this attack now remember because you're defeating the upgrade as part of the cost you do not get the plus one plus one so it's not like plus five plus one and gains overwhelm for this attack you lose the plus one plus one so let's say you play this on like a battlefield marine it goes back down to a three three and then you're attacking for seven with overwhelm this seems really, really powerful. This upgrade seems really, really good. One resource, that's a big game. Plus one, plus one, that's a pretty nice stat to cost upgrade. Usually when we see like two costed upgrades, it gives you a total of four stat points. So like Luke's lightsaber is a good example. When you see three costed upgrades, you're looking for six points of stats is kind of like the go-to. One cost, two points of stats makes a lot of sense and this gives you kind of like a heroic sacrifice type deal where you pay essentially three total mana and you get this massive hit in and the fact that it gives you overwhelm is pretty important because 
especially when you're racing opponents aggro decks or something like that you get to kill your opponent's unit and get in for a ton of damage let's say they play a unit they've already got a couple points of damage like let's say they play a k2so they ecl'd it they kept it alive it's got three points of damage on it which is a very common scenario you play heroic resolve on something and remember you can immediately action it so if you play this in one turn if your opponent's exhausted all the resources you essentially pay three resources into heroic resolve allowing you to immediately attack um, with this unit giving you plus four plus oh you kill your k their k2so you hit their base for i don't know six points of damage seven points of damage eight points of damage whatever it is and in some cases your unit might even survive after that even if it doesn't the whole goal is to get into a ton of damage and this does exactly that i could see this being really really powerful as kind of a replacement for heroic sacrifice because the nice thing about this is that it gets in for a ton of damage um more so than heroic sacrifice but it also gives that unit overwhelm and that i i could see being a lot more powerful the downside of this is that it doesn't immediately attack you do need to pay three total resources and you need to do it in two separate actions all those are major downsides don't get me wrong and i think heroic sacrifice actually does have some uses over heroic resolve but heroic resolve just gives you a bigger bang for your buck i think over the long run um than to like heroic sacrifice which is kind of like a similar idea the pump effects that allows you to attack and and get some value out of it while defeating whatever card you're playing right um in this case you're defeating the heroic resolve not the unit so it's a little bit different but i do see this being a lot of potential for your heroism uh, heroism aggro decks but now now we got to talk about probably the cards that people are looking at and just absolutely going crazy because i'm looking at the Aegis. they have good stats they have good abilities and in some cases they could be just absolutely absurd so first off we have zuckus a five resource cunning villainy six six with saboteur each friendly unit named Forlom gets plus one plus one and game saboteur so we'll get to Forlom in just a second because we're going to talk about them um, as well this is a five costed six six that's a really nice stat line that's the kind of stat line that you're looking for for five that is above average generally speaking if you look at the other five costed cards that you have in some of the other decks uh some of the other like boba decks for example you're generally getting a little bit weaker stat line heck if you even look like a five costed zeb that's a five five you look at five costed um steadfast battalion that's well a five five granted other the these other cards have other uses like you ecl the steadfast it becomes a seven seven but you could also ecl out zuckus kill something right you don't get the overwhelm but you can ecl it out and it probably will live more often than a steadfast battalion will right but then we consider the buff and the fact that it has saboteur right saboteur defeating all the shields right which is really really important because this set's probably going to be full of shields not only that but you also get to ignore all the sentinels also pretty relevant and the plus one plus one counts for the other unit which we got to talk about four as well here a four costed ground unit in cutting villainy a four four with ambush and each friendly unit named zuckus gets plus one plus one and gains ambush so here's the really important thing about Forlom and Zuckus. This curves into each other. These curve into each other. Four into five, right? And with Forlom here, it's a four costed four four. We've seen better, right? But a four four ambush is pretty on rate. We see like modded cohort. We see like escort skiff. These are the cards that we're looking at. And they end up being pretty effective on four resources, getting that ambush out. There's usually something that you can kill and it'll let this survive. And if you're able to curve Forlom into Zuckus, it becomes absurd because this gives H friendly named unit Zuckus plus one, plus one, and ambush. So now you think, okay, turn four, you ambush something. Great, you've killed something and you left a body behind. Let's say you're able to go first the following turn. You took initiative, you ambushed this, you took initiative. That's what you did. Your opponent um, probably, uh, I mean, in some cases, maybe they just have to take initiative so they don't just get absolutely blown out or hope that you don't have it. But then you get to go, okay, we're going to play a Zuckus. It is now a 7-7 seven, seven ambush on five. That is absolutely absurd. Remember, the fact that these can curve into each other is the important factor. If this was like, okay, Zuckus and Forlom, they're like two Reese's apart. Like you're playing a Forlom, like he's a 3-3 ambush for three, and Zuckus is like a 7-7 a seven, seven, uh, for six resources. It would be completely different because your opponents know it's coming. They see the fact that they kind of have to deal with this. Otherwise, if you play that card, they're kind of over. The fact that you can go turn three, play a Forlom, ambush your unit, 
turn four play a zuckus ambush your unit give the plus one plus one and saboteur to four lum and then you get to attack for five and then this also attacks for seven as a saboteur it's just absolutely absurd mind you you have a good chance that the board is pretty clear for these guys to survive a little bit because you've just ambushed twice in a row that seems absolutely absurd and again we do have to look at these cards individually because there's not always going to be a case where you have both of them in your hand or that they even survive uh each you know turns so that you can actually get the plus one plus one and their respective bonuses saboteur and ambush but if you just look at again zuckus five resource six six saboteur that's definitely a playable card it doesn't do anything on impact or on when played but a five resource six six is very reasonable it has the underworld tag which is pretty relevant same with bounty hunter and four lum i mean arguably four lums even better than zuckus here uh because he's a four four ambush which is pretty relevant and gives you a lot of game against well specifically aggro decks where you get to ambush value trade your opponent you get to prevent damage that's really important but then also even in the mid range decks you can maybe get some value trades there mess up their game plan mess up their combo whatever it is and it's a 4-4 left behind, which is really, really good because a lot of the four-costed units are units that have four power, four toughness, and you could potentially trade with them even if, well, you've ambushed something weaker, but then they play something, you get to go ahead and kill it anyways or trade with it with four lumps. So these cards look just really, really powerful to me. And honestly, uh, this is a pretty nasty curve uh, for Boba, right? Remember, you can go like Dr. Evazon turn two, turn three you play like a boba fat you could even play another event in between and remember because four lom ambushes you get to immediately ready up a resource after you play four lom so let's say you didn't want to just immediately take initiative i think if you do have zuckus you probably will want to so you can have a better chance of getting the ambushed zuckus but you get to ambush something and i think that's really important because when you're curving out as boba fat getting that extra resource having things like ma clunky you can bounce four lom to your hand potentially do another three damage you could play things like shoot first if you have another unit on the battlefield you have things like swoop down right which is another one resource play you have things like greedo all these one resource plays that end up being super powerful in boba makes these cards even better because you can trigger boba's effect when this comes down so i'm curious to hear what you all have to say but I am very convinced that these are some really powerful cards and some of the strongest things that we've seen for Boba, which is kind of crazy. Of course, Boba Fett's armor is already absurd. So is Swoop Down, but it just seems like it's getting better and better. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What's your favorite card? Um, I do think that Chewbacca looks pretty sweet. Same with Let the Wookiee Win. I can't wait for the Wookiee Tribal decks uh, and a few cool removal spells upgrades. And then, of course, the two Bounty Hunter pairs, uh, the, the Bounty Hunter pair that we went over. Uh, all of it looks really strong, actually. And I'm pretty impressed with all the cards that were revealed over the past couple days. That's why I had to make a video, because I was just sitting here in disbelief over Forlom and Zuckus. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you all for the next one.